All right, welcome back. You're still watching in the game on New Central TV. I'm Favor Itua. I'm being joined by uh, New Central's in house sports correspondent, Ope Adebari. Uh, good morning to you. Welcome. All right, uh, let's quickly go straight to the African Games. Talk about Team Nigerian athletes, uh, especially in the world of athletics, where they dominated the track and field event. Nigeria emerged top following the conclusion of the athletics event in the 13th African Games on Friday. Now, Nigerian athletes won a total of 21 medals, 11 gold, 6 silver, and 4 bronze, the country's fourth best ever performance in the history of the African Games. The likes of Toby Eloba Muson, Esi Brume, Chukwe Buka, and Yekwechi retained their titles in the women's 100 meter hurdles, women's long jump, and men's short foot event. Now, this is a brilliant one for Nigeria, especially in the world of athletics. Before athletics started, we did talk about the fact that we we're hoping to get more medals from the event, and it did come out as we expected. Definitely. And I think Egypt was already running away with it. It seemed like Egypt had a great lead um, because in, in a multi-sport tournament, Egypt is well-rounded. But for Nigeria, we we're waiting on the athletics because it, it's our stronghold in the history of the African Games. And definitely we showed that. Um, aside those key names that you did mention, it was good to see the likes of um, Ruto Soro come into the limelight and winning gold in the triple jump. Chidi Okeze winning the 400 meters for the first time in two decades, since 1989, since Nigeria had a gold medal um, in, in the 400 meters. And Chidi Okeze had been trying so much. 30 years old now, at uh, 2019, he got bronze, uh, 2016 bronze yeah. as well, and finally a gold medal. So kudos to the Nigerian athletes for doing very well in the track and field events. All right. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at how they finish in the athletics table for Nigerian athletes, uh, especially what uh, they were able to do, series of uh, events. From the hammer throw to the discourse and for athletics, Nigeria, of course, 11 gold, 6 silver, and 5 bronze medals, a total of 22. Coming close to Nigeria is Ethiopia with 7 gold, 7 silver, and 4 bronze medals. Kenya in fourth position, you would also think that they would dominate, but it was just the long distance race. Uh, 6 gold, 6 silver, and 8 bronze medals. Ghana, the host nation, in fifth position with 3 gold, 2 silver, and uh, 1 bronze medal. Algeria completing the 6, Gambia 7, Morocco 8. Zambia ninth and Cameroon 10th uh, position. Away from athletics, let's take it now straight to the world of boxing in the African Games. It was also a night to remember for Nigeria. Eight gold medals were swept by Team Nigerian boxers from the male and female category. And that was, of course, the last day of the boxing action. I mean, these boxers indeed came with everything they had uh, offered to you know, get Nigeria uh, high on the medal table. Definitely. And, and I believe we should, we should have even ended with nine gold medals. Um, one of the bouts in the 75 kg category. We had a very bizarre call from one of the referees. But I mean, nevertheless, um, the Nigerian athletes, both the male and the female boxers, they did okay. very well. And for even two of the bouts, uh, in the finals, their opponents just didn't turn up because they knew that they were going to be beaten mercilessly. Right. I guess our athletes channeled you know, the, the frustrations of Nigeria into their sport. All right. These are the boxers who had won uh, either gold or silver. Uh, on your TV screen, Ifan Yoyekwere, Men's 92, Jacinta, Blessing, Cynthia Adams, Patricia, Omole, Joy, Shukura, and uh, Zainab, all winning medals for Team Nigeria. At some point, some of the boxers had to tap out and say they are not boxing again because they had the feeling that Nigeria would uh, get uh, the very best when it comes to uh, the gold medal. So congratulations to them. We hope that they can pick more Olympic tickets when they go out uh, for qualifiers ahead of Paris 2020. Uh, 2024 Olympic Games. Away from boxing now to handball, where Nigeria's handball team won a bronze medal. Now, the significance of the bronze medal is the fact that it's the first time in 21 years that the handball uh, you know, team will be winning a medal at the African Games. And Sam Ocheho, uh, who is the president of the Nigerian Handball Federation, had a lot to say about the feat from the Nigerian handball men's team. Actually, the first medal handball is going to be picking in the last 21 years. Uh, the last time we won was when Nigeria hosted Koja in 2020, I mean 2003. And since then, we've not won any medal. So you can see why the boys are excited. And as a federation, we are all excited that uh, we're able to pick a medal at this tournament. It shows that we are going back to take our place and we are actually improving. And I think that is what we are looking forward to. Uh, if you look at the tournament, you find out that we, our average age is the youngest in this uh, tournament. That is to show what we've been doing around uh, youth, and we'll keep focusing on that so that this youth can take us place. All right, uh, that was, of course, the president of the Handball Federation, Sam Ocheho, talking about uh, what handball has been able to do when it comes to the African Games. Now, Ope, looking at the handball team, 
over the years, they've been consistent with their league. They've been investing. They've been getting private sponsors. You know, a lot of persons have been putting in their monies in the handball league. And can we say now that we are getting to reap, uh, the, you know, the rewards from the consistency in the handball federation? Definitely. If you invest, you would get a return on investment. And for the first time in more than 10 years, just like you said, um, the last time we won uh, a medal at handball was with the last time we hosted the African Games, Kojas, 2003. So definitely... For a good number of years, we've been consistent with the handball league. It's been good. But one thing is just that we've not been going for a lot of international competitions. And honestly, if you want to be one of the best, you need to compete with the best outside the nation as well. The reason why Egypt seems so dominant is because they continue to challenge themselves okay. against the best in the world. But so far, so good for Nigeria. I think this is just a stepping stone to greater things ahead. I think we have good athletes for our, for our handball team. Okay. They look very solid, both the male and the female. But I think the next step now is to start to compete in international competition. All right, we'll wait to see how it goes. Now let's come to the host country, Ghana. Now they put up, uh, a lot of persons have uh, tagged as a very wonderful uh, you know, event, talking about the 13th African Games after a trailing three weeks of big highs and barely any lows. Of course, our hearts were crashed, dreams were, sh you know, were made, some of the dreams of the athletes were shattered, uh, you know, smiles were seen on the faces of people uh, at the African Games. Ghanaians uh, uh, came out with, uh, you know, what a lot of persons you know, saw as a beautiful and colorful event, especially in the closing ceremony. One could not have asked for a better African Games tournament as Scottish draw down in style with a spectacular closing ceremony at the University of Ghana. At the end of the tournament, Team Ghana picked up 65 medals, of which 19 were gold. The highlights of the Ghana's impressive display came when on Friday, March 22nd, the country picked up nine medals, of which eight were gold. The likes of Rose Yeboa, Joseph Paul Amoa, uh, Kadman Yamoa, of course, in high jump, Samuel Taki of boxing, not forgetting the two gold medals picked up in the men's and the women's football event. That's a history, of course, you know, for uh, Team Ghana. And uh, to uh, uh, review the tournament, and of course, I uh, talk about how it all went down in Ghana. He is the Deputy Communications Manager for Ghana Football Association, Sheikh Tofik Abdukadiri Sienu, uh, joins us this morning on the way from Accra. Good morning to you. Welcome to In the Game. For having me. How is Ghana this morning? Oh, Alhamdulillah, Ghana is good. Um, coming from the back of an amazing and an incredible uh, 13th African Games that was hosted uh, in the country, Accra and Cape Coast to be precise. Um, the atmosphere has been filled with a lot of uh, uh, excitement, considering the fact that in the history of Ghana, this is the first time that um, Ghana has been able to record high number of, you know, medals in in the African Games, uh, winning as many as 68 medals is historic in the history of Ghana. In your introduction, I heard you say that it is also historic for Nigeria, uh, the number of medals that Nigeria has been able to record. And I think that um, we should, you know, pay particular attention to a number of other sporting disciplines apart from, you know, football. Of course, football is a, a you know, flagship sports, you know, product, both in Ghana and I don't know about Nigeria, but in Ghana, it is, it is a flagship product. However, the other sporting discipline needs equal attention from the government. And when that is done, it will really be able to push Ghana you know, very high on medal tables when you go to the Olympics or when you go to the African Games. And uh, for you all to know, out of the 68 medals that Ghana was able to get, over 45 of those medals came from arm wrestling, which is a new wow. sport. And for the first time taking part in the African Games, so clearly it tells you that if we put in place good structures and we nurture these athletes in the various sporting disciplines, it will give us a lot of medals. So in Ghana, it's it's been joy all over. Everybody is happy. Uh, the African Games was actually a festival and not just games. You know, people enjoy themselves, had a chance to go to the stadium to cheer these athletes up. Many people, many, many people came closer to athletics for the first time. Uh, apart from those of us who go through the university education and the senior high school education, Athletics is not that popular, you know, in Ghana, apart from in the schools.
But um, the African Games created a platform where a lot of people had the opportunity of watching athletics physically and getting to assess these athletes and how exciting it looks. So okay. everybody's happy. Um, the Games have been very, very, very successful and Ghanaians are excited with what has happened so far. All right, let's look at, uh, you know, the tournament, uh, the event hosted by Ghana. Now, a lot of persons will say, you know, after a major tournament, a lot of, uh, you know, activities will go down to, you know, being normal, especially talking about the facilities. Some of them may just uh, decay in the next few years. And you now ask yourself, this is a country that hosted a tournament just about some years ago. Now, where do you think Ghana will go from here after hosting Africa? Well, um, it's a very important question. Um, we've, over the years, come across a number of countries that have hosted major tournaments, and in the end, their facilities have become white elephants. A typical example is Gabon. After hosting the African Cup of Nations in 2017, in less than a year, one of their major stadia turned into a forest, and it was actually surprising to a lot of people. But in Ghana, uh, the story does not look quite different. Apart from the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi and the Accra Sports Stadium, the Tamale Sports Stadium and the um, Esipon Stadium, which were constructed for the African Cup of Nations in 2008, have also been crying for renovation now, especially the Tamale Stadium and the Esipon Stadium in Sekendi Takuradi. So your question is in, is in order. However, uh, we've had community from the government and for that matter, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, spelling out how these facilities will be used. First of all, the athletics facility uh, that was used for this particular competition is owned by the University of Ghana. And so it is about 90 or 85 percent guaranteed that this facility is going to be put to a very good use. When these facilities are in the hands of the universities to manage, they manage it very well because they host events almost every year and that puts the facility okay. alive. So, so, so that uh, is guaranteed, especially with the tartan tracks that will be used for athletics and the other things. All right. Now, um, if you look at the Boteman uh, sports complex where the indoor games were held, handball, volleyball, you know, um, arm wrestling, wrestling itself, swimming and the rest, that is also a world-class facility. And the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Rudankwe Kufuado, has already announced that that facility is going to be converted into a university facility. So just like I indicated earlier, we've all come to terms that the universities manage these facilities very well. So we are going to have a fully-fledged sports university in Ghana where these facilities will be managed by this university. And so um, already there's been a plan as to how these facilities will be managed after this particular, you know, African game. So we are, okay. we are sure uh, at least 50% um, that these facilities will be put to very good use um, by, by, by the states. All right, well said. Uh, my colleague here in the studio Ope, has a question for you. Hey, um, thank you for your great insight so far. Um, Ghana finished sixth on the medal table. Um, in, in my own opinion, I, I think it's quite good for me. I, I think I'll give it a pass mark. But in your opinion, considering the fact that Ghana was the host of the African Games, the, the, the finishing on the medal table, sixth place, is it good enough? Or do you feel like Ghanaian athletes could have done much better? Well, um... In the absence of good, bad is good. Uh, they, they say that if if you are going to the forest as a hunter, your plan of coming home with the biggest of, of animals that you can get. But if you don't and you get a rat, you manage with it. I think that, first of all, we need to show respect to countries like Egypt, Nigeria, South Africa, Algeria, and Tunisia for the number of medals that they were able to get. Um, Egypt, to be precise, they had 101 you know, gold medals. 
and uh, 101, 102 gold medals. And that's, that's, that's quite very impressive. It tells you that they took the other sporting disciplines very serious. Egypt did not even take part in the football competition. And so they concentrated on the other mini sporting activities and made sure that they had a lot of medals there. Now, first of all, it's got to do with the number of athletes that you register for this particular competition. And then secondly, it's got to do with how you prepare these athletes for this competition. So for Ghana, yes, uh, as the host nation, everybody would have expected that um, Ghana would be riding on top of the table or better still be second. But when you are competing with a country like Egypt, where sports is, is almost like a raw material for them, they spend a lot of money and they spend a lot of time in developing athletes and preparing them for competitions. When you are competing with Nigeria that has a population of about 250 million people, you have about 33 million people to compete with them. Uh, obviously, when you check the probability chart, you wouldn't be able to produce a lot of athletes just like Nigeria will produce because the more they have, the more they produce compared to yours. However, the highest for Ghana is that uh, we've been able to amass 68 medals for the first time in the history of the country, which has never happened, especially at the African Games. And getting 19 gold medals has also never happened in the history of Ghana. So, yes, um, somebody will say that maybe we are celebrating mediocrity, but that is not the case. Okay. The actual case is that we have, we have achieved a feat that has never been achieved before. And the high point is that right, Ghana was able to beat Nigeria in the U20 women's final to lift gold. And, and any time Ghana is able to beat Nigeria, okay. it's like 200 medals for us. All right. Uh, well said. Uh, let's quickly uh, listen to the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ghana. Not forgetting the local organizing committee. Uh, they had a lot to say at the closing ceremony. We'll be right back. The list is very tall. But permit me to single out a few people. We have had a three weeks of training African sports festival which assembles some of the continent. I would like, ladies and gentlemen, to take this opportunity to inform the African sport movement. All right, of course, a uh, series of uh, dignitaries there representing the Ghana uh, uh, country, talking about the games and uh, what they've been able to achieve. We're still being joined by Sheikh Tawfiq, uh, who is, of course, the Deputy Communications Manager, Ghana Football Association. Now, let's move straight to the world of football. Uh, just about on Friday, Ghana played its first game under Coach Oto Ado in a friendly match against Nigeria, which, of course, they lost two goals to one in that particular one. Yes, penalties were played by two, uh, the two nations. Siri Dezas has scored for Nigeria, and uh, it took, of course, uh, the Ayu brothers, one of them, uh, to get uh, the consolation for them right there in Morocco. The two countries are in Morocco for a two-friendly match for Ghana. They will play Uganda next, but for Nigeria, it will, they will be off against Mali. And uh, uh, Sheikh, uh, let's talk about the performance of Team Ghana. The first friendly match played under the new coach, uh, Coach Otto Ado, who is coming back into the team after guiding them to the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. What do you make of the performance? Is there hope for Ghana football after uh, you know appointing Coach Otto Ado? Of course, um, I think that anybody who watched the Black Stars at the African Cup of Nations and also watched the Black Stars play against Nigeria on Friday will see quite a bit of difference in the way the team played. First of all, Ghana played with a side that, you know, missed about 10 of the players who came to the African Cup of Nations. We had Atizigi in post who did not get a game at the AFCON, even though he was there. We had Ali Dusedu, who was also not uh, a starter for Ghana at the AFCON. We had uh, Patrick Kuzo, who was playing for the first time under Otuado. Uh, he was not even part of the squad in the AFCON. We had Jerome, who was also playing for the first time, not part of the AFCON squad. We had um, Edmond Ado also playing uh, uh, under Otto, you know, even though not the first time, but he was also not part of the Afghan squad. So we had about eight players who started the game against Nigeria who were not, you know, part of the Af Af Afghan uh, regularly. So clearly, you will understand that Otto wanted to use this particular game to know more of the players. But I, I think that um, Nigeria did very well. Uh, they continued from where they left off at the African Cup of Nations, being finalists. 
of course, uh, a lot of expectations were that they should be able to beat Ghana, and they were able to beat Ghana, and that's the most important thing. But for me, uh, and for many Ghanaians, what everybody was looking out for was how the team will shape up against Nigeria, the team's build-up play, how the team keeps possession, how the team uh, transitions into attack and transition into defense, how the team manages the game. And this was the most important thing. And, and, and Favour, you will agree with me that in the second half of the game, even, Ghana, even though Ghana suffered a red card, Ghana was able to manage the game and even kept possession higher True. than Nigeria at a point in time, pushing Nigeria to their own half, trying to look for the equalizer before Nigeria got that second goal through uh, one of your mercurial you know, wingers. So for me, I think that it's, it's a very good exercise for both countries. Uh, the rivalry has always okay. been there, especially when it comes to the football field. Nigeria did very well. Congratulations to them. But I think that Ghana also achieved the feat that we're looking for Attacking the players, getting to know who uh, is, is ready and how they will play under Otuado in his system and philosophy. So in the game against uh, Uganda, I expect quite a different game because Otto has now seen the player and something okay. different might be expected from the masters. All right. Uh, we wish, of course, we have enough time to talk more and more about uh, Ghana football, especially under the new coach, uh, Coach Otuado, with lots of names coming on board, lots of uh, players making appearance uh, when it comes to uh, the international stage. We'll only wait to see what it becomes in the next few months uh, in the next, next Nations Cup and hopefully uh, in the 2026 World Cup that will come in the uh, United States, Mexico and Canada. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Taufik uh, Abdul Kadiri, for your time. We really appreciate it and uh, we'll do this again some other time. Thank you very much, my brother.